नमस्कार अहमान सजैर वेरी वार्म गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रॉम द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज्म एज पार्ट ऑफ द देखो अपना देश वेबिनार्स एंड एज वी हैव बीन सेइंग फॉर द लास्ट 5 डेज नमस्ते इंडिया एंड नमस्ते वर्ल्ड वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग द इंटरनेशनल योगा डे सीरीज व्यूअर्स वी स्टार्टेड विद द होल सेशन ऑफ 5 डेज ब्रिंगिंग यू डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स अराउंड नॉट ओनली योगा बट द होल कांसेप्ट ऑफ द योगिक वे ऑफ लाइफ International Yoga Day incidentally was on 21st of June, and on Friday, which was the 19th, we started the journey of bringing to you the different elements of yoga, all the way from Uttarakhand, where three yoga specialists spoke about the philosophical and the more physical dimensions of yoga. On Saturday, we had the privilege of hosting Sadguru, and he spoke on various elements around the India and the incredible India being such a vast cultural treasure. also touching upon uh, the yoga and the yogic way of life on sunday we had a practitioner once again bringing it down to the everyday level how we can incorporate yoga so much as a part of our life on monday we again ran a practitioner and today we are bringing you a very interesting and a very aromatic and very tasty and yet very healthy element of the indian way of life the ancient wisdom how it has guided uh, our food traditions in india our kitchens they are actually you know we have a joke in india that goes you know what the kitchen is actually turning into something like a doctor's clinic because every spice on the shelf is supposed to have some health benefits attached to it and you ask your mom or you ask anybody around but why do they say it so you'll get the typical answer will be I really don't know. My mother said that, and my grandmother said that. So we have the grandmother muskas, we call them in India. It's part of our oral tradition, so much of it, but a lot of it is also part of the documented tradition. So we are going to be talking about that through two specialists today. We have with us Chef Rajiv Goyal. Hi, Rajiv, and we Hello, have everyone. Chef Gautam Chaudhary joining us today to talk uh, all about the role of. spice and food the way we churn it out in india incidentally viewers you would all perhaps be aware that the spice route that ran in the middle uh, ages of history and has continued to run till now india was a key part of that the most defining moment in the history of the spice route was the portuguese explorer was vasco da gama's eventful journey to malabar malabar is known for its parathas and what not and of course is known for fort kochi kozi kore they became a part of travel journey of anybody visiting india well apart from talking about the generic spices i think we feel so proud about turmeric these days so i'm going to ask uh, you know rajiv and gautam to focus on turmeric curcumin as it is being told is something that we have just added to our food without thinking it has to go there so so i think those are the kind of uh, uh, strengths that we as a culture have and we've been trying to focus on different elements before i introduce rajiv and gautam uh, to you viewers i must uh, also thank all of you for having encouraged us in all the webinars that we started on 14th of april as part of the dekho apna desh series we've tried to bring you many elements of our beautiful country and we are encouraging all of you to keep sharing with us any elements that you know of your neighborhood your part the way you look at your country the way you look at your culture you want to share anything please come on board with us we'd be very happy to host you but also joining us in this whole initiative is not just you the viewers but pushing you to become viewers have been some very young children associated with the industry and i must mention them today vishal sonwani has been the team leader he is at the rizvi college of um, uh, catering and hotel management in mumbai and his team with aditi tahir monavkar suryash chand chandratre uddesh all of these are students from catering college and there are many more there are many more in different states who joined us in bringing the whole campaign to all of you and making a big success out of the dekho apna desh series so thank you uh, young uh, you know participants of our dekho apna desh uh, scheme where you all been hidden behind the screen but you are the reason why we have all the viewers with us so thank you from uh, from all of us at the ministry 
So now introducing Chef Rajiv Goyal. Well, he is the founder and president of the India Food Tourism Organization. He's also the co-founder of India's Culinary Tour Company. He's a guest lecturer at many, many catering institutions. And he's a specialist. I can tell you that, viewers. Next time you need any tips, you know who to call. And joining him today is Chef Gautam Chaudhary. He represents the exclusive group of creative chefs. He's been at Radisson's, the Oberoi's. He's also been in Beverly Hills running and hosting and working on creating dishes in a restaurant there where they showcase so many beautiful elements of our cuisine. He's also been awarded the Silver Hat Award and uh, he's also a WAX certified judge. So thank you so much, both of you, for joining us. Rajiv, I'm going to pass the, the kitchen to you today. Thank you very much, ma'am, and thank you for the lovely introduction. Uh, without talking or repeating anything, same. I would like to start with my topic here, uh, which is very close to every Indian heart or every uh, every person heart, uh, you can say, on the planet, is the food. And today I'm trying to bring out uh, the the treasure of our Indian culture in shape of Vedic and uh, spices that we have. You know, if I say any point, if you hear me saying spice or a herb, so they mean same basically. You can say it's easily we have incorporated in our uh, kitchen, so we named it as spices, but technically all of them are herbs. So you can see the beautiful platter. That one of the thing of our culture is that we eat with the eyes first. So we also always make sure that uh, it should look good, not just uh, taste good. So it's a very important part of the culture. The uh, and, and of course, when we're talking about the India, what is India? So just for a refresher course here, we talk about that India used to be the 584 princely state before 1947. And uh, as we speak now, if you talk about, we had 28 states and eight union territories. So at any given time, we can say that at least we have 584 for sure, uh, princely state food to research about, but we have much, much larger things than that in shape of our own uh, Vedic culture. The, the scripts which were been written before with an experience with very well differently approach uh, towards the food because we always been told about the food by the medicinal value still now in our holy uh, in our daily kitchen we we have been taught or spoken about that okay this is that food okay we either that guy tells us or we ask that okay what is the benefit of it so you can say that is so embedded in our culture that uh, we always look for that medicinal value coming along with that food. So we have very different approach towards the food. We never speak, at least uh, in the language of what is carb, protein, but we have a very holistic understanding for the same. So there are a lot of spices which I'm going to talk about in further uh, for the slides. And uh, uh, this is a, my quick introduction, which has already been given. So I'm not going to uh, stay longer here. And uh, that is uh, Chef Gautam. So Chef Gautam uh, has been part of many, many amazing institutions. And Silver Hat winner, WAC, which is World Association of Chef Society, is a uh, judge in that. And uh, it was also part of the Master Chef uh, judge. Uh, it was, uh, and, and so on. So uh, yes, now coming to the main uh, topic, what we have for. So what is Vedic food when we spoke, speak about? and uh, which Veda speaks most about it. So every Veda speaks about it. So there is no such way which is not talking about uh, food because you cannot desist yourself without eating a day. So even those guys very, very thoughtfully have incorporated all the words moving around the food and the well-being. So Ayurveda we mostly hear about and Rig Veda. Today I'm not giving you anything, you know, in a, that tough language or uh, today I'm trying to bring out everything right dot and what's applying on the current scenario. So you will find that whatever I'm explaining today is very modernized, wrapped around so that we can easily, you know, take, get something take away from this webinar. And uh, it also leave us, uh, you know, leave a lot of good things to learn uh, from India, learn from our kitchen for the world. Because at this point in this pandemic, if we, if we really go about, you know, we have a, one of the best recovery rate and uh, very less mortality rate, I think I should but uh, one of the biggest things that we had, we never went to any uh, pharmacy for any kind of precaution. We were only looking for our kitchen, either to making kada out of it or having a haldiwala dood or having a tulsi in our water. And this is not something that we learned from the internet. This has been passed on from generations to generation 
grandma to grandma, mother, and you, even the youngest to the oldest in our family, knows what is kada, uh, knows what is the benefit of sulci, knows what is the benefit of uh, turmeric milk, which we call it in the world now, global, golden latte. So Ayurveda is basically, you know, very modern, you can say, implemented uh, food science, Ayur and Veda. Uh, Rig Veda, also been sp spoken about, told us about the grains, told us about a lot of spices, and Shushrut Veda, and there are a lot of Vedas around it. I just picked up two because I think we have to respect the time as well within this conversation. <laughs> so these two of them are uh, been uh, you know very prominently and easy accessible right now. So I pulled out some of the uh, you know basic concept of Ayurveda where we talk about Satvik, Tantric, Rajasik. This is these are the common words we usually hear about it. So I tried to explain by the colors where we are talking about the Satvik. So we, uh, in that way, does learned one thing that it's not that every food is for everyone. They were very smart enough to decide and design that what is your profession, the food will go accordingly. So you can say that the food was designed or decided by the profession you do so that while sitting or amount of energy you require to do that work will be supplied enough by the food. So I just gave you example that a uh, student were eating a different food where the food having more antioxidants and so on, where warrior had more protein and more fat food so that the energy levels maintain, so do the farmers. If you are a meditator, if you are a sadhu, you are having a sati food, which is, you know, less passionate, you are sitting calmly, your body stays calm, it doesn't produce heat much in within your body, you need to stay calm, maintain the body temperature. I'm going to talk about the body temperature in further uh, conversations, but as I said that the food, is not something generic back then. It was more decided based on uh, what kind of work you do. I think this is a very good takeaway from the Vedas that we should also, uh, you know, in the modern world, we say that we have to follow a different diet. I think they meant it way back then that there have to be a specific diet according to your profession. So uh, nothing wrong in following the diet right now. But uh, I think there is a lot to learn from the Vedas here. And, and uh, somehow if you can learn the basic science of heat management within the body, Nothing can beat that. So I'm moving to the next line. I think uh, this is what uh, most of us want to know and sometimes think about it. That uh, cooking techniques I'm bringing out here uh, with, the, with some learning from the Vedas here. So uh, back then they were using different kind of lubricants, but uh, the current easy accessible ones are ghee and a butter. So a lot of time when we do a tarka at home, so and it, uh, by the personal experience as well, I'm telling you, the normal process of doing tarka goes like that. You heat the pan, add the oil in that, then heat the oil, then add the jeera and the chili and so on, the spices. And this is where we end up doing wrong, uh, technically. This is one of the uh, cooking pattern technique has been broadly been said in the Vedas, where you need to take a pan, cold pan, no fire right now. You need to add a ghee, you need to add your jeera, you need to add your chili and then heat them up together. But the little logic changes because if we go by, we were using a hand crushed chilies. Now we use a very modern fine chili powder. So some of the nu nuances of that particular thing need to be learned. We were very focused on the raw food. We are, you can say the whole food was a concept. We were, we were maintaining the flavor value, oleoresin of the spices, the strength of the spices within them. We were using much more lesser uh, modernized. I guess I'm sure they, they were able to grind things to the fine level. Still, they haven't grinded it. So there was a logic behind it, which we have forgot to ask or uh, never thought about it. Because if you go by, we were eating wheat and different flowers and we were having a technique to grind things to the finest possible form or to powder it. But we were still not using the powder chilies. We were using the hand crushed, the visible uh, granule chilies. The reason was that flavor stay intact in them. So do same with the dhania powder, same with the jeera powder. So there was a reason. We wanted our body to work while digesting the food and you know act properly to extract all your reasons. Our body mechanism is very well built and has all the functions that you don't even know, like most of your phones, that have more functions than you think. And uh, uh, we are acute. We are we are made to extract flavors out of our our food, 
the important nutrition, important ingredient which requires we can our body can extract. But we sometimes, you know, while preparing it, either lose them or while cooking them lose it. So it is very important now since we got enough time in this lockdown to to learn the go back to basic and learn from our basic. That one first tip: tarka in a cold pan, heat the jeera or any seed you are using, either poppy seeds, either fenugreek seeds, or either mustard seeds, whichever seed you are adding to the oil, it should be in the cold oil, cold butter, cold ghee, and take the temperature together up so that smoothly the olive resin of the spice should come and increase the contact area of a flavor within that ghee or butter you are using. that was a quick tip from today's session and uh, this is a very basic because every food three times if you are eating requires tarka which is a tempering technique back then used as flavoring the element or protecting the element because that was also important to create a layer of a butter or a ghee on the top so that the weather cannot affect our food it is like an oil seal on the top that one of the reason adding a tempering on the top and this chapter cannot be end like this there's so much to talk about we have learned the use of spices way earlier we have learned the solvency level of the spices where we talk about we never use green chili in the oil we always use red chili in the oil because only reason that it is oil soluble where green chili is water soluble so do with many other spices we have learned how to extract maximum olive resin out of it and in which form we should extract it so we have learned Water solvency and fat solvency. So, and the worst part is probably you know when you when you put it in a high heat oil, immediately the oleo resins uh, evaporate. So you should not anyways treat any tempering to a very high temperature because it will eradicate the main essence, the main soul of that ingredient. So uh, today, by the way, guys, I need to share one thing that we are not just talking about the food; we are also cooking the food for you guys today. and uh, for that we have chef gautam today who will be giving a demonstration of a very indigenous and a modern recipe which is very easy quickly to make you can imagine yourself that if you have incorporated that food in this session so how quick it is to make uh, within this limited time so i'm moving i'm going to talk about it but before that i wanted to cover some important topic before we really heat up the pan that which pan we should use so back then people were very smart they never just like we yeah, have one i have one favorite pan in my kitchen but back then people never had one pan only they were very concerned what they are cooking how long it's going to be cooked and what are the heat or temperature it should be cooked on so they were using all different kind of pans where we talk about earthen pots where we talk about the uh, where if we wanted that some of the like a dahi a normal Uh, yogurt that we have it in our kitchen, were been been were been made in the uh, or were been kept in the earthen pot to make sure the extra water element of the yogurt to be extracted or to be submerged in the earthen pot. One quick example. Second, lot of food we were not sure back then that could react to the metal, so we were using earthen pots for it. Like if we are using couple of different spices together, we were just maintaining as a safe side that. there should not be any kind of metallic uh, toxic composition should happen to the food so we end up cooking in the earthen pots but at the same time we also learn that uh, our our pots are not just only for cooking they are very good for storage as well and there uh, the copper pot role comes in with this antibacterial property no bacteria could survive on copper pot it does require a regular maintenance regular when i say it's not that regular that you have to wash it every day but yes still uh, it's a very good medicinal property even if you go by the vedas it has been told to us that we should keep a pot or a glass of water in a copper and drink it every morning which will make sure it help us in in in, in clearing the bowel it makes your stomach better and so on but again sticking back to the topic it is very easy for me to drive away from one topic to another <laughs> so i'm sticking to the topic and uh, talking about another interesting that is a, the uh, the iron kadhai iron pan that we use in our cooking uh, we also have different uh, learning and saying about it that certain dishes like a begin ka patta have to be cooked in 
uh, iron pan it and it tastes good because of its metallic flavor uh, shiv gautam can you just uh, share something about this uh, metallic pan thing oh uh, uh, i think uh, uh, you know there are various forms that you can put forward the food in uh, when we talk about uh, let's start from the vessels uh, when we talk about the cooking vessels uh, every element every uh, vessel has its own uh, nature that it passes on to the food so when we talk about copper uh, copper is very uh, uh, very high heat agni bahut strong hoti hai pita ke liye you know anyone who is low on pita uske liye bahut acha hai it it curtails down your uh, digestive system it, it you benefit from uh, uh, from from this metal aap raat ko sone se pehle uh, usme pani soak karke rakhe ya usme subah uthte hi wo pani piye ya fir us copper ke vessel mein aap uh, khana banaye it is very very good it is very good for people who are high on kapha because they need to build up on their pita so kapha pita kapha uh, kapha or uh, vata pita kapha are teen uh, three doshas uh, uh, of uh, ayurveda so when we talk about silver for example so silver is uh, uh, silver is something which cools down your body you know anything uh, when you have uh, uh, any food or any drink in a, in a silver vessel it cools down your body it body it relaxes it rejuvenates it uh, it is very very good for people who are who are high heated who jinko gussa bahut jaldi aata hai it cools them down it, it relaxes you down as well as it is uh, uh, you know it is aphrodisiac in nature when we talk about brass uh, brass is another metal which is uh, which is very grounded it builds up your immunity it increases your immunity levels so uh, brass generally uh, un um, un jagah uh, pe use hota tha brass ka har jaise uh, abhi chef rajiv was talking about uh, ki har uh, segment ka har khane ke tarike ka kisi kisi na kisi जैसे तामसिक रातसिक और सात्विक की बात कर रहे थे तो साधु लोग सात्विक खाना खाते हैं बिकॉज दे हैव टू बिल्ड अप देयर इम्यून सिस्टम और देयर देयर इट शुड सेटिस्फाई देयर योर योर वर्क कल्चर और योर वर्क प्रोफाइल सो सिमिलरली ब्रास जनरली गांव के एरिया में यूज होता था क्योंकि यू आर वेरी ससेप्टेबल टू द जर्म्स अराउंड आप मिट्टी के मिट्टी में खेलते हैं मिट्टी में सारा दिन आप रहते हैं और वो मिट्टी से बहुत सारे कीटाणु आपके अंदर जाते हैं ब्रास किल्स इट ब्रिंग्स अप योर इम्यूनिटी इट किल्स दोस बैक्टीरिया दोस नेगेटिव बैक्टीरिया विच आम यू सिमिलरली वेन बी टॉक अबाउट ब्रॉन्स ब्रॉन्स आजकल बहुत ज्यादा यूज नहीं होता बट ब्रॉन्स इज अ वेरी वेरी गुड कुकिंग वेसल फॉर योर अगेन फॉर बिल्डिंग अप योर इम्यूनिटी इट गिवस यूर लिटल वेरी वेरी गुड मेंटल हेल्थ यू कैन वेल वेन वेन यूर कुकिंग थिंग्स इन ब्रॉन्स वेसल it increases your uh, appetite it increases your metabolism aap higher rate mein wo energy ko burn karke convert karte hain similarly iron as uh, rajiv has spoken about it gives you lots of minerals uh, and it is very good for your health there is one thing which shayad hum completely eradicate kar chuke hain which is uh, clay pot ovens ya terracotta mein uh, cook karna आज शायद हम अपनी रेसिपी भी टेराकोटा में ही कुक कर रहे हैं एंड वी वांटेड टू शोकेस दिस टेराकोटा पॉट्स गिव्स यू दोस अर्दी फ्लेवर्स इट कीप्स यू ग्राउंडेड इट कीप्स यू टू द ग्राउंड रियलिटी एंड बिल्ड्स अप योर इम्यून सिस्टम इट इज इट इज वेरी वेरी गुड दिस इज वन वेसल विच इज वेरी वेरी गुड फॉर वाता पिता काफा ऑल थ्री ब्रांड्स तीनों दोषों को कवर करता है और तीनों दोषों को बहुत अच्छे से हैंडल uh, करता है सो दैट वॉज अ ग्रेट इनपुट शेफ and uh, we were also using leaves back then to enjoy mm-hmm. uh, to increase the flavor values of the food so uh, that we also been completely forgotten in the modern time we still get to see some amazing dishes cooked in down south mm-hmm. either and and some western part of india where we talking about patwani machhi cooked by uh, the parsi community and uh, some of the kerala dishes are been made and some of the upper most uttarakhand there are some of the dishes in uttarakhand specifically ski dishes are still made with the leaves so i think these are the small things that we can easily accept. these are accessible and can be implemented in the modern day life so these are not the big things that we really have to go market and do out if you really look out and look around you every household in india have some uh, box where there are things that have been kept for the d day and this is the time to take them out and start using them and as i said that the leaves also contain an amazing cooking uh, flavors so one should think about it and most of the food which is cooked in the leaves 
is steamed, majorly steamed. So automatically it is good to explain or easy to explain that if it's steamed, at some point it, it should be paired with some fat curry, but by itself it is not giving you an extra fat that, that, that most of us are worried about nowadays. So by this I'm moving to the next slide. And uh, the body heat management. I think we go by this uh, questions every day. Uh, if you don't have any professional uh, a nutritionist or dietitian, but you still struggle with this uh, question that uh, what we should eat to stay healthy. So we bought out some of the very easy and quick things to understand within this, uh, the Vedic science of idea. We have learned it back then. We are talking about saturated or unsaturated fat. The simple understanding for most of the fat back then was that the quick fat, the fat which can melt in your palm, that is the temperature, which is 37 degrees. Any fat which melts in your palm is good for your body. Imagine because this is the same temperature that inner body contains. So if it's melting here, it will not stick to your body. That is a very quick tip to, to, to understand. Back then, that was a method that used that. If any fat melts here, it is good for your body. And either it has to be too thick, like mustard oil, where I say that mustard oil do not melt here, but still, it, that it's unsaturated fat and it is good for your body. And seed oils, a lot of seed oils, if you talk about, we have been using from ages, like either talking about the almond oil, we are talking about sesame oil. These are, again, seed oil is a different thing, but we were uh, referring, uh, referring to this refined oil. As I had said earlier, that our body is a perfect mechanism as per the Veda. And we should let or keep our body or put our body on a job to digest things in a natural way. So do with the juice and fruit. Our body is very well organized to extract nutrition and sugar or uh, you can say it lasts longer when you eat food, fruit instead of juice. The nutrition value lasts longer in your body where when you drink the juice, it instantly flush out. So never drink juice as if you want to intake the nutrition as a refresher, as a hydrating element, it is good for sure. You should not skip it. But when you are eat, uh, drinking juice by thinking that you are taking a nutrition value in you, no, it is not as compared to eating a raw food. A raw fruit. So I, uh, even for the kids, I think that is the most important part. And by drinking too much and not eating that food, fruit particularly, you put your body into a very different mode. Because if you don't use that feature for longer, some point the body features start reacting differently and should not, it doesn't work that way it should. So it, is, it has been explained back then that we should eat fruit than, than drinking juice. That is a very common household tip I want to share here. Other thing is that uh, a refined flour or wheat flour. We have been, we have been scared, uh, we have been told by every mom and grandmom that they don't eat meda. The refined flour, it will stick to your lungs or what not. But that is a myth. In fact, you will be surprised that we digest meda faster than wheat. But is it good for you? No, not at all. Digesting meda means that the food you ate for extracting nutrition value out of it, but you end up digesting faster. You digest meda faster than wheat or a whole wheat or other grain flour. Uh, either it is buckwheat flour, either it is millet flour, either it is we are talking about various different flowers we use in India. I think that is also, and they have been used regularly. Today, even the dish we are using, we are use, not using the wheat, we are using, not using the rice, we are using a very special grain today. I'm not going to reveal right now. I leave that to the chef Papam to talk about that. And uh, uh, refined flour. So we should restrain, it is not bad for you, but technically you're not getting anything out of it. So even you are just processing it in your body, which is not good for you. So that's where uh, the role comes in to have more of uh, the whole wheat and put your body on the job. Let body digest that food uh, as long as possible. That is what this, I meant by this slide. And other thing is that hot and cold management. You know, we often uh, don't realize it, but our body has been, you know, function. It has been made uh, to function by itself. It is a good mechanism. Our body maintains the temperature. And if it doesn't maintain the temperature, we call it, we have a fever. 
That's how you measure it. We take a thermometer and keep it in your mouth. And if the body's temperature is not what we expect as 37 degree or 98.6 Fahrenheit, that means you're not functioning right. So that is what I meant with hot and cold. So unfortunately, we most of the time end up exhausting our body by giving it a very high or a very low temperature by drinking or eating something. I think it has been very well told in the Vedas that anything you can easily hold in your hand is good for your body. Same, easy accessibility. Uh, though our hands are capable of handling 10 times hot, uh, uh, our tongue can handle 10 times hotter food than your hand, but it doesn't mean that you should always test that. <laughs> it is very important that, uh, uh, that you should maintain the body inner temperature. The intake of the body, if you, if you read some of the religion back, old religions like in India, the Jain, basically one of the good religion to learn for our body science, you can take some uh, learning from the Jainism. I'm not talking about restricting yourself from eating onions and garlic, but they are very good things that you can learn from them. That old Jain priest, basically, the Jain Muni, we call them, were eating everything by the hand. So they used to do this way and eat everything by this. Till now, the, all, the, all the Rishi Muni, or the Muni is basically Jain Muni, they eat everything in the hand. And the logic behind, if you ask them, simple is that if my hand can hold that, my body can for surely can handle that easily. So uh, it was about the balancing the temperature. Even if you, you know, it is, uh, it is, uh, there's a famous saying uh, that your fingers are your body thermometers. So uh, if you can, if your fingers can handle it, they immediately adapt. Your body adapts to that temperature, whether it is extremely hot or extremely cold, your, it, that food, whatever temperature that it is on, it will not harm your body. Sorry, Rajitya, please can yeah, yeah. So, eating water theory from the back, I'm just sharing here. Mm -hmm. So, as per the Vedas in the modern language, I'm, I'm translating for you, that we should eat more water than drink more water. So, three major things happen when you eat more water, that your body temperature stay balanced. You get more nutrition value and vitamins intake, any for sure. And third is that not frequent urination. You do not urinate. It may be sound very different and weird that why I'm talking about the urination at the, at the food session, but it is very, very important. Our body is also a fridge or thermostat. So any point, uh, you know, either by drinking too much water, we make our body temperature low. I'm not saying that don't drink or stop drinking water. You should drink water, but only what is required. But you will find when you are eating water, you do not get urge of that water or the urge of water that frequently as much as you get when you are not eating the water. So one, frequent urination, uh, you know, bring your body temperature suddenly very low, which means your internal organs struggle again to bring that temperature back to 37. So that's why we shiver sometimes after that we shiver or, or we have that kind of sensation that where you lose the body temperature. Whenever we lose our body temperature, we shiver, even in the cold weather. So it is a very good symbol or learning that if you're shivering, our body temperature is not maintained. So what does it happen in the fever? So uh, the quick, easy to understand, eat more vegetables and fruits, which contain high amount of water, especially in this time, particularly uh, back then they were worried about that water quality that because there were a lot of waterborne diseases back then. So they said like, we're going we're gonna to limit ourselves with the water. So that's how the eating water rule came in and so on. There's a lot of story, but uh, this is a quick understanding about some of the spices, grains we are talking about here, that where we grow. These are the grains that we are talking about today. The bowl with the brown grains, we are talking about the buckwheat. We are, the bowl with the dark green color, you see is the green grass, which is our Vedic spice or a Vedic uh, ingredient, you can say. Uh, we are talking about the turmeric, of course. And the green leaf you see is the pan. Yes, it is palm. We are talking about the palm today. It's but it's a value. And this is where we are talking about the green gram. As for the green gram, if you go, it's a very interesting. Hari Mung Dal, a, a common household. But if you go back in history, the Buddha told his disciples, recommended the green gram soup. Even the Kashapas, if you read the Kashapa Pran, you will learn about the Kashapa has discussed about the green gram as well. Uh, green gram particularly, at this point, if you really go deep and also do a little research, 
is have so much medicinal value that it is even recommended in the soup form to the facial paralytic people you know arthritis green is a substitute for soap as well if you really go in the royal uh, cosmetic diaries you will learn that it was also been used as a soap but i think more than that that you can see uh, we only use uh, those ingredient on our body that we have sacrificed so you can understand that how versatile and how important this uh, particular gram is and now i leave this thing to chef gautam where we going to start our cooking demo and i'll let chef gautam explain more about uh, the medicinal value of green gram and yes we are cooking today and uh, over to you chef gautam and and we look for detailed uh, explanation what you are cooking today keeps you keeps earthy qualities uh, intact uh, it keeps you grounded uh, it is a good rejuvenator i will introduce the ingredients quickly so what we are doing today is uh, we have some desi ghee i have some turmeric some vegetables uh, some ginger uh, i have boiled the green lentils uh, uh, because of the shortage of time and uh, along with that we have some onions and some buckwheat which i have pre soaked so buckwheat uh, is nothing else but uh, uh, kutu as we know it so uh, we will uh, take some desi ghee in the pot do not shy away from uh, using the desi ghee desi ghee is one healthy fat your uh, every meal component should be comprising of uh, uh, a few things uh, uh, you know when we talk about roughage and the vegetables uh, uh, there should be at least uh, 50% of the component of your meal that should be only that should be only uh, 50% of your meal component should be comprising of your vegetables then uh, you should have uh, proteins which should be approximately 25% you should have good quality of fats i have added the cumin and the ginger while i am talking and uh, you can have a closer look it is getting tempered the the earthy flavors of uh, the uh, of the vessel will immediately get transported Cooking in this vessel will help you a lot. I've just added some turmeric. We'll sauté it a little. These indigenous indigenous grains that Rajiv was speaking about. I'm adding some vegetables, by the way. I've added some green beans, some green peas. Some uh, carrots. i do not like cooking and you should not be cooking your onions too much so i'm adding the onions at a later stage so i do not want to fry them and burn it and uh, get caramelize the sugar that's a very important point from the chef gautam here that we should utilize the sugar of the onions for your body rather than just cook them or evaporate in the air so that's what uh, she said and vegetables are a choice that you can add any vegetable of your choice it is not mandatory to have that uh, vegetable she got it yeah how to i wish that technology should improve and we can smell this what's cooking there at some point yes so, sir uh, going to say that chef I think we are going to make everybody hungry and running to their kitchens <laughs> after you cook. <laughs> okay, I am adding the salt now. Post the salt, I will add on the buckwheat. 
the pre-soaked buckwheat, which is nothing else but kutu. Uh, it is very rich in uh, carbohydrate content. It is very good source of protein. And rich in magnesium and uh, uh, zinc. So these these uh, minerals are very very rich and very good quantity is available in this. I will saute it a little. Add a little water because my green lentil is pre-boiled, so it will not take too much of time. These terracotta pots are not too difficult to get. I think every household should have uh, should have a couple of these vessels. Your roti, the uh, terracotta or clay ke table pe hamesha pakani chahiye. Jitni dhimi aaj pe aapki roti pakegi, jisse hum kacha khana aur pakawa khana ke baare mein jaante hain. So, jitna aap slow aaj pe cooking karenge, jitni dhimi aaj pe cooking hogi, cooking utni achhi hogi. Jis baare mein shayad Rajiv initiated the the subject. कि आपका जो जितने भी आपके टेम्परिंग वाले स्पाइसेस हैं, दे शुड गो इन कोल्ड ऑयल, कोल्ड पैक, एंड स्लोली एंड ग्रेजुअली इट शुड रिड्यूस इस ऑयल रेजिंस, ऑयल रेजिंस बेसिकली डिफाइन्ड इन टू ऑयल एंड रेजिंस, कंबिनेशन ऑफ टू वर्ड्स, एंड इट इज़ द मेन फ्लेवर और द सोल ऑफ एनी स्पाइस, स uh, which are which are basically nothing else but the extract of the of the main ingredient or the main sub of the of the spice. Yeah. Liquid form available now, oil resin. Absolutely. Uh, we are use, we, we're using nowadays that we can get extracted uh, in a liquid form. So we will uh, add uh, the green lentil. The green lentil itself is a very good source of uh, protein. And we'll let it boil. I guess uh, this is a one pot cooking, guys. Uh, this is also something where uh, we can we can we should think about. That's a single pot cooking. Uh, that it doesn't take too much of uh, your cooking equipment. Just a single pot. And uh, the earthen vessel that the chef is cooking in also maintain the heat for longer. So compared to any other, the the heat value is a very different, and it it's been maintained for longer and evenly till the top, evenly till the top. Compared to the metals, where you sometimes find the bottom is uh, is much hotter than the neck. In this case, it is evenly spreaded all across. Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely, and I think uh, you know uh, uh, that can be explained by the shape of the vessel. So the shape of the vessel is narrow from the top. So uh, when anything which is which is narrow, the heat escaping out is much more lesser. It is a similar principle which is as well used in tandoor. So, meanwhile, our khichdi is cooking. I'm, I'm, as I, as ma'am said, that we are all getting hungry by by seeing the sauce. But let's move our topic. Meanwhile, uh, on the screen, I'm sure you guys can see the ingredients. It's a very quick recipe, easy. Most of the things are available in the house. And those who are worried about ki buckwheat or kutu is not to eat, I think it's a myth. We need to burst that myth. It is not that uh, that you can't eat throughout your you can eat any time you want throughout the year. It depends on what form are you eating. We are not having in a powder form. We are having as a whole wheat, whole grain, and easily accessible. Uh, I can see that it's already been uh, almost read, uh, like getting ready now. So uh, meanwhile, it still gets a little more uh, sizzling. I'm moving towards the next uh, slide here. And this slide is interesting because it brings out an ingredient that we added in that uh, pot, which is turmeric. So I think indigenous to India, we have a documented, uh, you know, notes from at least, uh, or we have a traces from 2,500 years that we have been using it 
initially if you go by we never use turmeric as a spice or food we initially started using it as a dye and later on we learned the medicinal property of the same and then we incorporated in our uh, our daily life right now uh, if we talk about uh, uh, the uh, the current uh, uh, scenario of the turmeric the globe is eating either in form of pills or taking as something or the other but in india it is a very common household we have been eating from ages we have it as our food from i don't even I, and most of the people i've spoken to who are in the late 80s and they don't even know that but this is just now we we know we eating it and one of the logic i should tell you that in any point anywhere in any curry which involves water if any curry involves water you will find that we are adding turmeric to it you know that that initial reasoning about adding turmeric to the water was we were so sure that no matter how what quality of the water is the turmeric going to clean it so one of these reason was very important back then because if you really go by the purification water sources back then it was a big you know trouble that water is not clean water is not good you might get sick but we were so we were trusting it so much that we were adding turmeric to everything now you sit and recall all the recipes that you know or you learn that every recipe involves water the indian recipe has turmeric in it unless we are boiling one particular green where we trust the green has its own value and flavors and medicinal value so we leave the green without turmeric even still now just by the habit we still adding uh, turmeric to the greens as well where green didn't require much of the uh, turmeric but you know that it became so habitual of us that every food required you break i think and, that's and, the uh, antiseptic qualities that turmeric has rajiv right just not antiseptic ma'am the list is big but i'm going to highlight the few anti arthritic anti fungal anti inflammatory anti bacterial anti cancer and anti so many x that we don't even or possibly we haven't learned one of the reason for our good skin tone the bigger immunity you can say the the strength the body inner strength is is turmeric i can uh, i think in this current pandemic it would not be wrong to say that the recovery rate of indians are much faster than any other i wish good health to everyone in, on the planet but if you go by the logic that indians are recovering one of the reason that turmeric has been so embedded in our in our system that uh, and the first thing we reach out if we get any any sore muscle or if we hurt or if we just look at any part of our body more than a medicine first thing we reach out is a haldi wala doodh the turmeric milk and it is a very common household it is not if you say haldi wala doodh to any or a turmeric milk to any indian he won't find it strange though we have our own uh, flavor taste in the mind when we speak about it but now the world is learning it has been given as a gym supplement or it has been advised to athletes it's been advised to people who are involved in the physical uh, work that one should uh, drink uh, golden latte or a turmeric wala uh, turmeric milk or a haldi wala doodh hamara or with the honey or sugar whatever you want but the reason to have it with the milk is only that it should stay longer in our body that's one of the reason Rajiv, so on the pot with uh, gautam you mentioned uh, that you can get earthen pot from anywhere but a lot of people are asking this question that uh, is it necessary to be sure that you're buying an earthen pot which has been made by soil or mitti which is not toxic because uh, or it doesn't matter and can you just buy the one on the road side and actually put it on the gas it won't crack i mean there these are some questions coming so ma'am it's a very very valid and very important question uh, there are two kinds of terracotta pots so one is which is baked at a very very high temperature the one that the kind that i'm using which can be directly put on the range mm -hmm. uh, there is another one which is not very not high, baked at a very high temperature it goes to around 700 750 degrees uh, the baking temperature and uh, it is only dried and immediately taken out so it it takes around 18 odd hours of uh, of cooking time uh, that is not very strong the something which which i am using which is terracotta which which is uh, baked for a longer duration and a higher temperature will certainly retain the oil and as well as it will not crack if you directly put it on the fire so uh, uh, these these ones are easily available you get it on amazon 
देर आर सो मेनी कुम्हार की दुकाने आस पास हर हर एरिया एवरी एरिया mention a little about that kumhar round the corner because that also viewers adds to the whole narrative that we must build as a country on the atmanirbharta that we need to develop and we need to you know support our own artisans not only because we should as a country but also why should we not promote our own people and make them make a good living for themselves and it is such a sustainable thing uh autumn we would definitely like to know a little bit more about how to procure these uh ma'am these are uh, as i mentioned these are easily available on uh, amazon so amazon flipkart terracotta pots are available okay so should we call them a particular category should we say these are glazed ones or what should we call them just write terracotta pot so okay. terracotta will the uh, ones that are available on uh, uh, these these portals they are uh, they are the big ones just write terracotta pot and you will be able to search it fantastic so we are all going and buying a terracotta uh, uh, pot today viewers and i think we'll be doing a great service to our nation by doing that so all the women go ahead and order and all the men go ahead and buy from your wives if you don't cook um rajiv carry on yep so but uh, at the same time just adding to the same thing what we were just talking about these pots which you buy from outside and you think that they are not seasoned or are they good you can season by them yourself as well though it's a little tedious process but there is a possibility and uh, i really go by your thought ma'am that atmanirbhar bharat and i'm very very happy because i really want the surroundings the people around us should also get some employment so and nowadays you know the people also know that they they know this is going to come back so they are easily accessible kumhar near you you can just ask them ki i need to cook in them they will tell you get you the right one so atmanirbhar bharat of course i favor that and people around you should get some employment too in this tough time and uh, coming back to the food topic again here we are with the turmeric so as i said turmeric tough cold common skin disease covid or anything in the world i think we have this uh, golden baton that we're going to fight with uh, fight the fight any disease or uh, with this and uh, it's been in the vedas from x number everybody knows about it but just we wanted to give a refresher course on this Uh, it has been consumed with the fat the reason that fat stay longer in our body compared to the water that is the reason it has been taken as a milk and now i am moving towards the pan uh the pan uh, according to the shushra the great ayurvedic surgeon if you know about he is a father of surgery even globally when i remember visiting one of the greatest institute of surgery in germany and i was surprised to see the the statue of shushruta and uh, according to them they also respect our vedas or shushrut veda as one of the primary or first uh, surgery vedas you can say so the betel leaf uh, is aromatic stimulative uh, carminative acid and there are so many properties uh, it has been dealt with for uh, constipation betel leaf and even some of the veda says throat pain cough skin trouble fatigue uh, poisonous bites even it has been uh, said that it can treat the poisonous bites and uh, i was reading somewhere that if the juice of pan mixed with a ginger juice and uh, taken uh, once a day could also treat lot of lung disease and since it's natural there is no side effects of uh, uh, having a pan and uh, uh, pan is uh, very easily accessible to everyone in north east of india one should travel and must experience how uh, the pan is been grown uh, though it's it, it's been grown around uh, uh, most of the north india and uh, uh, north east is one place where they even if you really go by the history of india and even in our religious ceremony the, most of the ingredients we keep in our religious ceremonies are good for human intake and this is where we respect them and celebrate them so pan is one of those most celebrated ingredient of indian offerings uh, in our food it has also been said that the root of pan root of betel oil pan is good for all three different kind of dosha uh, if you have read or know about ayurved concept the vata pitta kapha and uh, it is very well adapted by the moguls as well if you if you like moglai food 
you will be surprised to know one of the very common name when we say mughal is a galauti kebab and uh, we also have a specialist here for galauti kebab chef gautam uh, we'll uh, we'll let him uh, put some more shadow uh, more light on this uh, galauti kebab but the galauti kebab also contains a pan ki jad which is a root of this which is known for treating all three kind of dosha even the mughal have learned lot from the ayurveda and ayurvedic uh, uh, way of eating the food uh chef gautam is this uh, ready kitri so i can come back so we'll uh, i'll just show you the product quickly so it is uh, ready here uh, the buckwheat is cooked well we'll turn off the gas we'll take it out in a bowl uh make sure you know the, the best part is uh, this is a healthy fat and desi ghee which has been you know people have been speaking about that it is it has been hal healthy there's a lot of debate which has been going around for last uh, a decade and a half desi ghee is very very healthy it is a part of healthy fat uh, it is very very important that you in your daily life uh, include uh, the desi ghee will add some uh, green coriander the chopped green coriander which has various uh, numerous uh, medicinal benefits and a touch of lemon guys this is uh, uh, this is something which is very very healthy very bahut poshtik hai ye and i think hame is we should include these uh, these grains on regular basis in our day to day life हम लोग शायद अपने मिलेट्स भूल चुके हैं बट वीट एंड आटा और मैदा शायद हमारे uh, हमारे हमारा हिस्सा नहीं था हमारी हमारी uh, सभ्यता का हमारे हमारे डेली कल्चर का मिलेट्स वर अ रेगुलर पार्ट बाले हो गया बाले राजीव स्पोकन अबाउट बाले इज वेरी वेरी इंडिजिनियस सॉल्ट हम रागी ऑल दो थिंग्स आर वेरी वेरी इंडिजिनियस एंड दे हैव लॉर्ड ऑफ मेडिसिनल वैल्यूज एंड बेनिफिट्स हमें उन चीजों का उपयोग उन चीजों का यूसेज जितना ज्यादा कर सके दैट विल मेक आत्मनिर्भर भारत फॉर श्योर थैंक यू शेफ आई थिंक दैट वाज रियली नाइस आई विश इट वाज नॉट वर्चुअल एंड वी कुड एक्चुअली गेट इट बट आई थिंक दैट कांट हैपन सो वी हैव टू कुक राजीव यू हैव सम मोर टू मेंशन और या सी इट्स नेवर एंडिंग बट डेफिनेटली वन वेरी क्विक वन आई एम गोइंग टू मेक इट हियर आई जस्ट फॉर द क्लॉक हियर अपराजिता फ्रॉम द डाउन साउथ इंडिया it's a blue flower basically it's a blue tea if you have read it some exotic place but it is indigenous to india even the mention in the tamil savitrata it is so so uh, nutritious or you can say so rich with its own uh, values that even it has been given or made drink people who are been got snake bite or scorpion sting that it is so good in in uh, as a as a as a medicine but nowadays it has been served exotically calling it as a blue tea but this is very indigenous indian and is been easily available in down south and very common it's it's like a head grows it's it's like it it climbs any uh, it's a herb that which head grows around you but we completely ignore it so this is one of the thing that we should include it also boosts your immunity right now in this covid time it is important that to boost your immunity by the easy accessible thing which should not give a burden to your body so this come as a local household that's blue flower uh that was where i wanted to end by saying anyone can cook but the only fearless can be a great chef it is a it is a quote from the movie ratatouille uh, if you have not saw that should watch that movie i love that movie and it's a very good amalgamation of cooking and and the the part of chef and now over to you ma'am i I'll, i'll leave it to you here uh, by thanking you for an opportunity this hour has ended a little too fast i think you know <laughs> and i'm sure my viewers are going to agree that one session on food in india no way i think uh, not only because it is just we don't look at food as just food to fill our bellies but food is so it's a celebration of life and uh, it is not just a celebration of life but it is uh, something that defines us that lives with us continuously and is so much a part that is weaved into our life uh, viewers 
that I must share with you at this juncture when we are talking of Vedic foods, the, the Annapurna Stotram, which is an exquisite hymn in the praise of the goddess Annapurna. This hymn was uh, written by Adi Shankaracharyaji. He lived in the early 8th century India. Annapurna is the goddess of food and nourishment. She is the form of Parvati, the inseparable Shakti of Lord Shiva. Anna is translated as food and grain. And second part, the Purna, is the completion part of it, the complete. Annapurna Devi's picture, if you see, if you Google later and see, she holds in one hand a jewel bowl full of grains, and in the other, she's holding a golden ladle, symbolizing the abundant nourishment that she gives to all. She's the mother goddess. She's the sustainer of life. And viewers, I think these are values and these are things that we need to evoke in times when humanity is currently, uh, you know, facing unprecedented onslaught of COVID. The, the need to merge all senses and how food is not just a physical thing, but it is, it is beyond that. And I think, uh, Rajiv, a quick comment from you on the whole philosophy, because we are finishing a five-day, I would say, camp, sort of, on yoga, Ayurveda, and how everything encompasses human life. That life, which is Ayu, is a combination, a samyog, of body, senses, mind, and soul. Uh, what do you think about that, Rajiv? Um, I, you start with any topic, I'm going to bring it to the food anyway. So I'm going to talk about the food yoga here. We do the physical yoga, but there is the organs which are doing some exercises within. And my take, uh, my, I really wanted to give a message today by saying that let's put our inner organ to extract nutrition value from the food, start eating healthy, and let our body do its own internal job where we were eating or devoted towards too much of refined food. I think this is a good time to learn from our Vedic culture of food and explore. In India, you know, it is what I we just shared quickly today. It's just a small part of Thing. Our India culture have so much all across uh, to explore and learn small nuances of the cooking techniques. So it is not limited to what particular region or state. Every state have their own unique points. So that's where I bring out Dekho Apna Desh or Chakho Apna Desh, Edible India. And uh, I, I uh, give it back to ma'am, please. Thank you, Rajiv. And you just keep, um, in, you know, trying, experimenting with foods and keep posting uh, your pictures, the way you look at food and the way you made it on our own uh, Instagram handles of Incredible India. We'll be very happy to post your pictures. Talking of states, today happens to be a very auspicious day. The Sri Jagannath Temple's uh, Rath Yatra of uh, Jagannath Ji is a form of Vishnu. And it is also one of the holiest Vaishnav Hindu Char Dhams in India. And today is the Jagannath uh, Rath Yatra, which is a seven day festival. Of course, it has to be observed, keeping in the norms of social distancing. But uh, nevertheless, we, we pray for everyone's uh, good health and we pray to the Lord to keep everybody safe and healthy in these times. Look after yourself. But do not forget to make the kitri, pack your food, because Thursday, 25th, you're going to take you on a motoring expedition. So you need to pack that picnic hamper before you head out. And all the tips have been given by Chef Gautam and by Rajiv today on what you should pack into your hamper. Do not forget to put some soft viewers because it aids digestion. I can add a lot of the mummy tips, I think, here. But uh, thank you so much, viewers. And thank you so much, Rajiv and Gautam for coming in for this webinar today and talking to us about some of the forgotten traditions. Some, we have them. You just helped us, you know, to validate them. And to all the viewers who have been from the different parts of the world, do learn about the wisdom of foods from India, but then come to India as soon as it's safe to travel. Come live with us. Come taste the food the way we make it. And we would be very happy to host all of you as soon as the world is good to travel. So thank you once again, everyone, for tuning in. See you on 25th Thursday, 11 a.m., same time. We're going to go motoring. Namaskar.